Hey everyone, I hope you're well. It's JD here and in today's episode, I'm going to be teaching you all about how you can configure your Databricks workspace environment with private endpoints. That's right, gone are the days where you could access your Databricks workspace environment over the public internet, from your personal device or wherever country you may be. Only joking. However, Organizations are now aware that they can leverage private endpoints to securely access those their Databricks workspaces over the private network, whether that might be you need to be on the company's corporate network or within the network within Azure. Although, if you were like me and when you read the documentation, you may have come away a little bit confused. And I mean, I know I certainly was. Private endpoints for Databricks isn't set up in your normal native way for your other past services. So in this video, I'm gonna be taking away a lot of the confusion around how Databricks should be configured with private endpoints and show you how you can leverage my accelerator that I've developed in Azure Bicep to configure this correctly. Let's get into it. So if you navigate over to my repository, which is in the description below, you will see there is a Databricks private endpoint folder with a DBW standard and an IAC folder, which then in turn holds all the deployment files for our infrastructure. Now, if you've read the documentation, and let's get over to that now, you will see that the way that the Databricks workspaces need to be structured is again, slightly different to your standard PaaS services. So as you can see in our transit VNet, this translates to our hub VNet. We have a Databricks workspace that has this browser authentication private endpoint associated with that. Now this browser authentication private endpoint is not associated to every single Databricks workspaces. This is set at a region level. So you can only have one endpoint per region. And that is why we host this centrally within our hub network in order for our other spoke Databricks workspaces to leverage that. So that browser authentication private endpoint is to enable that single sign-on authentication um, for our Databricks workspace. And it is absolutely crucial um, in order for our uh, Databricks to be accessible over the private endpoint. And that's exactly what we've got configured here. We've got our central Databricks workspace and that browser authentication private endpoint um, deployed to that here. Okay, and then we've got our respected private DNS zone with the link there to the hub VNet. So if we go ahead and deploy this uh, file, I've got a deploy.ps1 uh, file here where you can quite simply deploy that, that bicep template. Um, I preempted it and, and gone and deployed that service. We can see if we go to our hub resource group that we have got our resources deployed here. Now, what we've got in here is we've got our Azure Bastion, which is to allow us to access the virtual machine in order to access that workspace. We've got our Databricks workspace, which is of course VNet injected. And we've got a series of NSGs and we've got our private endpoint for our browser authentication um, connectivity. Okay, we've got our DNS zone here. So if we translate this to the documentation that is over here, we can see we've got our workspace um, over here. We've got that browser authentication private endpoint and we've got that DNS zone linking us to that, um, to, to that private endpoint. Okay, brilliant. So I've got that central endpoint. I've got my browser authentication set at the region level. How do I then go ahead and deploy a spoke into that? So following that documentation, what I've deployed here is in my spoke. I've got my spoke Databricks workspace here with the, brow with the back end authentication. So this private endpoint, and I've got my front end private endpoint. Now, the way that this is structured is, is that our backend private endpoint and our front end private endpoint are exactly the same target sub resource ID. So if I go into this one, I can see that's the Databricks UI API. And this is also the Databricks UI API. And you might be thinking, well, how does this, how does that work? Because you can't have two private endpoints of the same sub resource type going exactly into the same zone because you can only have one DNS entry record. They'll be exactly the same. And you're perfectly right. And the way that this works is, is that the front end private endpoint that we've got here is actually associated into our hub network as we've got here. And in turn is in the private DNS zone 
linked to our hub network. Whereas our backend private endpoint is actually associated to our spoke and will be used in the private DNS zone that is linked within our spoke. And that's what we've got here. So we've got two private endpoints but situated in separate vnets. And if we reference the documentation, that's exactly what we'd expect, okay? So we've got our private DNS zone for our spoke, which is linked to our backend private endpoint. And we've got our front end private endpoint, which is our production workload that we've got here, linked to the hub vnet, which is our front end endpoint. So if I go to access that workspace, can I access this? And the answer should be no. And that's exactly what I've got here. So configuring privacy settings are not allowing us to um, connect to that workspace. So what I've done is that in our hub network, I've provisioned a virtual machine. And I'm gonna connect via Bastion. Going to so what I'm going to do is I'm going to access my VM. So I'm going to paste my password in here and I'm going to hit connect. And as you can see, the VM is now starting up. Now I'll cross all this stuff off for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire up edge. and log into the Azure portal, start with that, your data, continue. And if I navigate to my spoke Databricks workspace that I've got here, I'm now gonna see if I can access this from within the virtual machine. As I demonstrated outside the network, it didn't work, but now that I'm on my uh, workspace, I can now access this. Now to really test if everything's working as it should be, can I create a uh, very basic cluster? And I'm gonna hit create compute. And I'm gonna see if this cluster creates. So as you can see now, the cluster has successfully started up and is able to leverage the connection to the Databricks workspace over the backbone using that private endpoint. So just to recap the resources that we have deployed, we've got our hub network, and this translates to our transit vena as described in the documentation. We've got our central workspace here that leverages the browser authentication private endpoint. As I mentioned, you only have one of these per region. So this workspace needs to deploy, be deployed somewhere central. And this leverages the private link .azure databricks .private DNS zone, where we can see we've got our um, record sets here, we've got our browser auth endpoint here, and we've got the front end connection for our spoke Databricks workspace. If we head over to our spoke workspace, um, you can see that we've got two endpoints here. We've got our front end, which is obviously the, uh, the uh, Databricks UI API private endpoint that resides in our hub network. And we've got our back end private endpoint for our Databricks UI API, which sits within our spoke and that spoke and that backend private endpoint sits within its private DNS zone um, within uh, the spoke network. Simples. I hope you found this video useful and have learned how you can now securely access your Databricks workspace over a private endpoint. As always, please like and subscribe and stay tuned for the following content that's gonna be released over the coming months. Thanks everyone.